I want to thank everyone for joining us today for this edition of Author Talk uh, with Human Kinetics. Uh, my name is Aaron, and today I get the great honor to uh, of talking to mixed martial arts trainer and coach Everton Oliveira. Uh, just a little background, Everton has more than 15 years experience uh, in the field training some of the top athletes in the world uh, in both Brazil and uh, the United States. Uh, he has coached his athletes to 33 MMA titles, uh, five international Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world gold medals, uh, one IBJJ Pan American gold medal, um, including some athletes uh, like Antonio Bigfoot Silva, uh, you know, Amanda Nunes, who became the first and only woman to ever earn uh, double championships in the UFC. Uh, basically, he sent me a very impressive list of athletes that, he's, uh, that he has worked with. Um, he's one of four co-authors of Training and Conditioning for MMA, I have the book right here. Uh, and I've been looking forward to this interview uh, really since the book was released. So I, again, want to thank you for joining me today. And how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for the invitation. And I'm looking forward to share some uh, experience here to talk about uh, training and talk about strategies. And okay, great. Everything else. Uh, so I mentioned you were one of four coaches uh, that have contributed to this book. So I don't want to get uh, too far without giving them some credit too. Uh, so could you tell everyone watching and listening uh, a little bit about them and kind of how you guys came together to work on this book? So let's mm -hmm. start with Stefan Diaz. Uh, he's my uh, huge friend. Like we know each other over like 30 okay. years maybe i don't want right. to talk about age but yeah it's been long long time uh okay. we're from the same city uh he was the one and uh who invited me to come here to us to help him in uh, some uh projects that uh, he was working with another friend and then i decided to okay. to join them and since then uh we start to to work together and start to to develop some uh different things and uh, he always look for uh write something uh he's a teaching okay. university so he came uh, to the idea he did this before in brazil when he was in russia so he has several uh, books talking about okay. sports and training so then uh we start to to, to work together and uh, there was uh, the first one in Brazil and then okay. there is one in the US, so yeah, it's super. Okay. Super nice to, to be Great. Um, so to give a little perspective to our listeners, uh, like I said, you've been training MM athletes for uh, quite a while um, and you are an American top team, which is known as the best uh, training team to work with. Um, can you tell us a little bit about American Top Team and kind of maybe go into some of your experiences there and kind of what what, what that is like training in a facility like that? Okay, so we are talking about, uh, if I don't uh, miss, it's five or six years consecutive, uh, mm -hmm. considered the best team in the world. And I'm super happy to be part of the team. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a huge uh, opportunity and challenging to work with them because it's a huge team, many, many athletes from different mm -hmm. part of the whole world. So we need to kind of uh, trying to, to get connect uh, to the athletes, uh, even when uh, the, the okay. language is not the same. So example, I had experience to work okay. with some Japanese guy oh, wow. and he didn't speak English and I didn't speak right. Uh, Japanese, so he was with uh, some device and he was like speaking, oh, wow. and translating, and <laughs> it, it was kind of tough to, to train him, but was right. a great experience. So yeah, it's it's a huge opportunity as a professional and just uh, make me a better professional every single okay. day. Okay. Um, so what I, I know that you uh, trained in both the United States and in Brazil. Can you? Uh, Tell us a little bit more about your history and how you got into uh, training MMA athletes. So I have a, a BJJ right. Uh, background, right? So I started to train ju the judo when I was four years old. And then I uh, started to train jujitsu in 1997. Okay. And I earned my black belt in 2007. So 30 years practic practicing jujitsu 
and competing <clears throat> and training hard and being around right. the martial arts, right? And I did uh, receive my degree okay. in physical education in Brazil. Uh, I was uh, working as a personal trainer, as a fitness trainer, uh, conditioning mm -hmm. trainer, functional trainer. So uh, everything around the exercise, we, we, we had certain experience. And uh, I decided to, to go uh, backstage and uh, develop some okay. uh, business over there. So uh, we start to, to, to build a gym. So me and some partners, we, we bought a, a gym yeah. over there. It was a martial arts gym plus fitness gym. And from there, I came to U.S. in 2000, yeah. end of 2011, uh, 2012. And to help Stefan and to work with him. And since then, I'm here. And in 2012, I start to, to help Stefan okay. and American Top Team uh, and work with some athletes uh, yeah. as a Bigfoot Silva, Thiago Pitbull, and mm -hmm. some other, other guys. And but, yeah, I'm there. So you mentioned, uh, you, you mentioned Silva. And uh, I remember, uh, and I think I actually heard you say that that was one of the uh, biggest moments maybe in your uh, career in the United States, uh, training Silva and going into that match um, against Alistair Overeem. So can you tell us about that and kind of, um, I guess, the progression into where you were then and I, I guess how much you've progressed uh, since that point? Because I, I know you, you said that, that was a pretty big part in your career. Okay. Yeah. Was the first biggest moment in my career. Uh, I had the opportunity to work with him. And right. It was funny because he's a huge <laughs> right. guy, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Huge heavyweight guy. So he looked at myself like uh, <laughs> upside down and he said, "Like you're going going to right. be my my trainer." And I look at him and I say, "Like yes, <laughs> and I will beat you up, and you're gonna respect me." Like okay. that's what I did in the first week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because uh, I made this on purpose. And mm -hmm. I earned his respect and we start to get connect. And then mm -hmm. the, the Overing fight came up. Uh, was okay. my first camp with him. And he invited me to be on his corner, which was like yeah. one of the most amazing experience because just to be uh, around mm -hmm. the, the, the cage and watching what right. happened was a history, <laughs> right? So... And after that fight, uh, he received the title right. uh, shot. So was my first title shot as, okay. a, as a performance sport coach, working with, with one professional wow. MMA fighter. And <laughs> it was awesome. Well, I, I have so many uh, good memories that I can, I can like, uh, right. we uh, stay uh, So one of the things that you just mentioned there was um, you kind of got, you, you found a way to get him to buy in to your methods and to trust you. Um, and I know one of the big parts of, you know, being a trainer, being a coach is like building that relationship with the athletes that you're working with. Can you, so can you talk a little bit about how, how important that is to build that relationship, um, not only with the people that you're working with, but uh, with the athletes too? I consider, this is my, 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 my opinion, I consider this one of the most important okay. uh, thing mm -hmm. uh, as a trainer, as a coach, you have to develop, you have to build is right. the relationship, right? Because to be a good, uh, to be good in what you do, come on, you have to, to, yeah. to, to bring the knowledge, you have to bring the experience. Without this, you can't right. uh, deliver the results. But uh, the difference in between this to be good and to be great is something between, and I consider the relationship and the, the trust uh, you build with the athletes mm -hmm. is the most important thing because we will talk, uh, he will uh, talk about issues, uh, some, uh, some things that's bothering him, uh, and we need to be ready to address this situation and to turn in a positive way. So with Bigfoot, I start to work around the, his body, but not only his body, uh, his mind too. And I have a neuro-linguistic program, uh, specialization okay. in my background. Uh, and honest, I use this kind of strategies every single day to myself and uh, to the athletes and to, to okay. people who I work. 
And like I said, the, the basic thing for me, you have to know what you're doing. Yes, you have to, to, to bring the knowledge, like I said, the experience and everything. But man, to work on a high level, you have to bring something else. And for me, is the it, to build the relationship and, and to work around this. Because at the end of the day, they are mm -hmm. regular people like us uh, with a lot of pressure uh, to perform. And in the case of the fighters, right. uh, they're going to fight. So that, that, there's uh, this extra thing. And yeah, we need to work in a, uh, in a confidence and like doubts. And yeah. like it's a roller coaster doing the whole camp. And right. we need to be ready to help them. So another thing you mentioned there is that uh, the whole mental side of the sport. And I think that's true in uh, really any sport or competition uh, that you're participating in is you know, having, uh, putting together a strong mental performance so that you're able to compete. Um, but uh, MMA and Jiu Jitsu, I mean, it's so, uh, I guess, considering the intensity of those sports, how much more important is the mental side of that for them? Uh, honest, uh, it's a big part of the, the, the performance. I, I say to them, like, to, to step in a cage, you have mm -hmm. to be physically prepared, prepare, technical prepare, and but what's going to define uh, how you're going to perform uh, out there is your mental, uh, it's your mindset, it's your mental game. And we know the, the, for me, the week before the fight is one of the hardest week because some fighters, mm -hmm. they, they have to cut a lot of weight. Uh, the anxiety, the, the, the feelings around the, the, the fight right. week, it's huge. So some fighters, they, are, they can't sleep. Imagine, you have to cut weight, you have right. to, to recover your body, plus you have to <laughs> fight on Saturday. So some fighters, they tell us like, uh, in the weightings, they okay. kind of like shut down, like, this is my part. No, mm -hmm. This is just part of the business. Your part right. is going to be the next following day. And you have to be prepared to step there and perform. So uh, as a coach, uh, we need to, like I said, we need to have tools to help them. Uh, and this is something weird because uh, every single athlete, in my opinion, they should have right. a, a psychological uh, professional working with them. But in the reality, most of them, they don't. They don't have right. for any reasons, right? Uh, so we try to like, kind of uh, help them uh, okay. in what we can. And, and, and one of good, good things about, uh, about ADT is the martial art coaches, they okay. very open mind uh, with that. So they, they, they get uh, prepared on the, on the, the mental side and they go like uh, study and, and get knowledge and work around this. So it, like I said, it, it's amazing to be around the environment and, and see how little details uh, can help uh, on their performance. Like I can, I can, yeah. I just remember one, like uh, there's one, one situation and uh, I, work, I, was, I was working with one of the, the guys and I get, I, I, I get to know that he was kind of uh, doubting okay. right. himself, right? I wasn't with him, so I grabbed my phone. I called w uh, one of the coaches, the head, the the the, the, the uh, his head coach okay. who was uh, who was with him, and I said like, "Hey, this is the situation. I don't know if you know, because the guy was was by himself." Uh, so he said like, "Okay, thank you for the, the advice. I will work around." And he did work around, and they oh, got wow. there and knocked the guy out and earned like a, a big okay. uh, result. So. This is just a little detail when we go to the to the field. To be right. To, to so I guess that that sounds like it kind of plays into uh, like managing burnout in some of them because they are training so intensely, um, and then that actual competition is so intense that it can uh, maybe be a little mental draining. So are there anything else, Are there any other things that you have to do uh, as a coach of a sport like this to? Um, help them prevent burning out uh, in the course of training, in the course of a training year. Okay. okay. Uh, like right. I said, first of all, build a relationship. Without that, uh, we don't know anything about yeah. the fighters. So they need to trust us 
and it's a it's a, right. a, a two ways right i need to trust them and they need to trust me and the strategy that i will try to build uh yeah. for them and after that we start to get to know each other and mm -hmm. they will start to talk about something that's bothering them uh sometimes they try to to hide some problems sometimes they try to just push through right but it's not enough and when we know that we can as a team try to work around and give them the the right support uh to help them to 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 perform right. as best as they can right so sometimes there's some some personal problems can affect on their performance sometimes like uh sometimes i just say to to the guy i can't this is uh, funny yeah. to say, but sometimes I can feel them because we we know each other so well. So I look at them mm -hmm. and say, like, is everything OK? And they just just, just uh, uh, pull me on the side and say, like, coach, this is happening. This is happening. So and sometimes I say, like, hey, do you know what? Let's do something okay. different. Yeah. I change okay. everything in my mind and I just like trying to, to get them more like, OK, let's have fun. Let's play around a little bit and and take the 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 the, the bad uh energy uh, out and just bring them back and then uh after uh all those years like we can okay. see like something good about uh it. so i guess getting more into the uh the physical aspect of it um can you kind of describe like what a typical training year for an mma athlete might look like and i know that'll probably that'll depend on you know how many fights they might have um and just kind of you know the course of how the year is going but uh, for people that might not be familiar can you kind of walk us through what a typical year of training might look like for one of your athletes okay this is kind okay. of uh tricky right because uh i always talk about like friends uh who teach in the university and we talk about i like to to exchange the experience and this is funny because when we go for the 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 methods, the theory mm -hmm. uh, behind the training, right? Uh, we know exactly how we organize the program and how long, example, trying to build like 12 weeks uh, training right. program for some athlete, right? But there's a, there's a, 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 a specific part. Sometimes we don't okay. know when they're going right. to come. Sometimes they come to us and say like, hey, listen, I have a fight okay. in two weeks, four weeks, right. six weeks. Right. So in my mind, as a performance coach, this mm -hmm. is way far from the ideal okay. work, but this is the reality. Right. So this is this is uh, uh, how, how how the sport happened. And I'm not talking about the champions or like the, the, the top contenders, because, OK, with them, we okay. know we have certain time. Uh, we know they will. Uh, schedule a fight like sure. for three months or right. four months or six months, right? But for the biggest part of the team, okay. they need to be ready. No matter what, no matter how, they need to be ready. And this is the hardest part to work as a, as a performance coach because uh, you cannot uh, push too much, but you, you need to build them uh, okay. to build right. their performance. So I like to separate when I have time, example, if I have 12 weeks, I like to separate and cycles like three weeks uh, and plus one week uh, okay. load or recovery and then the transition for another cycle and another cycle. So if I have 12 weeks, I will do this okay. right. uh, three times, right? So I like to keep them working. I always say like you're professional. I always ask them, what is right. your profession? Like, I'm a fighter. I say, like, you're not yeah. a fighter. You're yeah. a professional athlete. And being a professional athlete means you have to be right. in basic shape, right? You have to, to, to keep yourself active. You have to take care of your, your diet, your weight. You have to manage that because especially, like, light to have weight down, you have to cut weight. So if you go up right. too much, it's going to be high. So I always trying to manage this, uh, even if they are outside the country or, or whatever, I try to control this. And then from there, I try to keep uh, working their uh, dynamic strength, uh, 
hypertrophy and trying to increase their their uh, athleticism. And then when we go to the camp, I start to turn to the maximum strength and transition to power, and I try to to okay. to mix it up the methods uh, that I like to use. And again, it's it's all connect. So uh, some fighters they like to do certain uh, okay. type of training, and they trust and they feel good. And I'm not saying this type of training is better than this and that. No, there's many many strategies uh, we can use to build the 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 the, the professional right. performance, right? But as I know the guy. I know some guys, they like to, to lift, to, to do like weightlifting uh, derivatives. And I try to keep working around and trying to, to use some different things here and there. But sometimes they come to me and say like, coach, don't go crazy. I don't want to do that. Yeah. And I need to respect, I, I, you know? So guys, they like to try new things. There's one thing. Uh, okay. I don't work one-on-one like uh, many athletes uh, in a different times, but right. okay. all together. Yeah. so sometimes I'm running like 15, yeah. 18 guys at the same time. I don't do group okay. uh, training session. It's individual uh, right. programs. So what I do is run the whole, the whole, the whole class like crazy. Yeah going here, hey, you need to do this. Hey, you need to do that. Hey, slow down. Hey, yeah. push hard. Hey, So uh, I need to get prepared. I need to get there, like, prepared to, 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 to do what I have to do. Uh, like I said, talking mm -hmm. about methods. I like to do okay. uh, some analogy, right? Imagine something. You have uh, your freeze, your fridge, and you have, like, uh, okay. fruit. Then I'm right. using fruits one by one. I can't say right. one is better than other. And yeah. you have to build a yeah. vitamin for your athlete. You have to choose three. Okay, three. right. Then, right? I can choose three and give you the vitamin and you can taste and say like, yeah. oh, <laughs> I love it. I can give the same three to another one yeah. and be like, mm, I hate it. So... And the, the experience to mix it up, methods, exercise, work together to help them to perform during their, their, their mm -hmm. specificity, for me is the key. So uh, I was talking with a friend, and now with the social media, we see a lot of people coming yeah. like, this is the best five exercise for this. This is the best right. five strategies for that. I, I, I hate this yep. as, a, as a professional because really, how, how right. can you say this right. is the best? Because everyone's a little different. You know, yep. many, 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 everyone is different. We have many, many different ways to work like power. Uh, uh, do you know, like you have the uh, you have mm -hmm. the complex training, you have like the, the PAP uh, method, you have like the accommodating uh, mm -hmm. resistance training, you have the uh, eccentric training, you have the balance training. So professional I trying to have experience and trying to understand mm -hmm. everything around and from there trying to specify what I want as a professional right. and what the fighter wants. And this is one thing that's important to be inside the team because we, we, we connect with the other coaches and sometimes like the head coach come to me and say like hey yeah. His isometric is not that good. Please help them with that. Uh, his speed is not that good. His footwork, so please help yeah. with that. So this is important. And the fact that I'm inside the team, I know that. This is, for me, it's some important uh, thing. Uh, if I compare to somebody who, is, who can be pretty good, but okay. is not inside the team. So because, like, how you how are you going to know what's going on if yep. you don't talk with the other coaches? Yep. You don't have that That's what I was going to say. That's where uh, what you were speaking of, uh, speaking to earlier, just that whole communication with the other coaches, with the athletes, building those relationships just so that you can 
even know what to do and what works for each individual person. So um, that's great there. So, so one thing that uh, came to mind, and I know it's a, it's a chapter in the book here, um, a, a sport uh, like mixed martial arts, uh, I mean, you're, you're going to end up with injuries. So could you speak to um, maybe some of the most common injuries that you see, uh, maybe with the uh, athletes that you're working with, and um, I, I guess really what you have to do to kind of help them rehab uh, through those injuries so that they can get back to performance shape? Okay, so yeah, MMA is one yeah. of the toughest sport uh, mm -hmm. we see. Like they, they, they go over each other and, yeah. and this is kind of like hard to work around. The, the injuries, the lining between the performance and the injury is so, so tight uh, and it's, it's hard. It's just hard. I always say that like, uh, I cannot mm -hmm. uh, prevent the injury and try to minimize the, 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 I can try to minimize uh, the right. injury problem, right? Trying to trying to build the balance in between the strength, trying to help them with the mobility, flexibility. Okay. I'm trying to teach them also, like, come on, trying to arrive earlier, trying to activate yourself, mm -hmm. trying to warm up yourself better, trying to work in some areas that you're feeling like uncomfort, like shoulder, knees, uh, and then go for the for mm -hmm. the for the training. It's not easy because the schedule is so complicated. They they have to perform uh, two times a, a day, uh, times a week. Like uh, it's more than than right. five training sessions per week, and it's hard. Uh, like I said, uh, together in a multi uh, okay multidisciplinary yep. team. It's important. Important too. So they have to take care. They have to to recover well. They have to sleep well, eat well, uh, do their physical therapy, uh, and try to use the best strategies we can have. Like uh, right now, I used to I used to to think about in the beginning of my career. I I, I used to think about mm -hmm. better, right, like the strength conditioning. How can I help right. them to perform better? So. And at one point, I start to realize, oops, uh, there's not my area. Okay. Right. right? It, it, it's all connect because it's all it's all uh, muscle action. It's all like uh, physical uh, that they are using. So okay, uh, mm -hmm. I need to understand that they, they came from a wrestling okay. practice, like very intense. So do do I have to go over them and beat them all? Right. Four hours later, right. six hours later, and work in the same. Mm. You know, so you need to look in the big picture and trying to understand the sport first, and then understand the fighter, and then trying to create some program to help them. Uh, I was <laughs> talking with with some fighter last week, and he said, like, uh, coach, I'm feeling like uh, very good. Like my card is good, my speed is good, but my my isometric i i kind of feel a little bit the transition when i have to grapple a lot i feel i'm losing my power when we have to exchange exchange mm -hmm. striking uh techniques this is important feedback for me as a as a performance coach right. because i need to help him uh to get better in this specific situation i'm not saying i don't need to work on his speed or his power no but I need to address something that he's feeling uh, besides keep uh, right. going the wrong way, I would say. So we need to understand also, like, mm -hmm. okay, against who you're going to fight. If you're going to fight against a grappler guy, we need right. to build something. If we know the grappling won't help, won't happen, then kind of like play around in a different way. But we need to understand uh, the game, I would say. Uh, if you're going to fight against somebody that in some point, the percentage that the guy going to mm -hmm. grapple with you, it's right. big, you need to be prepared. Because besides that, you can just like burn yourself out. Then you performance, your performance is going to start to slow down and you're going to lose your power and then things change. I always uh, talk to them, uh, they feel their opponent like power or strength 
take them hmm. down or to knock them down, knock them out, and confidence start to, to, to increase because they say like, okay, is there everything that you have for me? It's not enough and I will beat you up. So this is kind of the feedback. It, it's, 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 it's interesting because in MMA, we talk about like the right. power, yep. right? We can, we can hear, uh, mm -hmm. talk about big names who, who has knockout power. Those guys, when they're going to fight against somebody else, their opponent know if they touch okay, them, right. they're going to hurt them. That's the idea I like okay. to bring to my athletes. You guys need to make your opponent scared to get close to you. Just giving an example. Everybody right. knows Thiago Santos, Marreta. If he touches <laughs> if he touches you, he's going to hurt you. Right. And And... That's that's the, that's the amazing part about right. the performance side, and then you combine with the whole technique, the whole okay. strategy, and then okay. comes the performance. Um, so if you can, um, I want to see if you can compare what it's like to train an MMA athlete compared to a different sport. Um, I, I guess more uh, other traditional American sports, say like uh, football, or you know. Um, I don't know, basketball, something like that. Just how, because I know it's more of a niche uh, training area, niche sport. So can you kind of like, uh, I guess, express how different that is and what, what different types of things you have to do in that situation? Okay. Uh, I don't have experience okay. with, with American football. I have experience okay, with sure. the racing car drivers, uh, tennis players, okay. and, and fighters, right? Uh, so I had the opportunity to work a little bit with one football player, but was a little bit like was okay. like a month, a month and a half. The guy was was working out in for Lauderdale, so I had the opportunity to work with him. But like was like a general, general. He was he was off season, right. so it was a general workout. What I think is, if I have to, if I receive, let's let's talk about. Mm -hmm. it. If I have to work with a football, right? I need to uh, just to understand and and think like oh i don't have this experience i need to get to know the the specificities about the sport and understand what they need and from there you start to to try to build right. uh the programs and also uh ob obviously trying to to look how they work trying to get to the field and trying okay. to understand more about the sport and then you start to break down the sport and trying to mm -hmm. to help with the strategies like i said the strategies, okay. there's many, many strategies. Exercise, there's many, many exercises. You can combine it in a different way. But for that, you need to understand uh, what you're going uh, through uh, right. with the athlete. So, yeah, this is my, my, my opinion. You have to, to study uh, what you're going to, to, to do with the athlete. And like mm -hmm. I said, understand the sport. Uh, if you have experience, you don't need uh, to have experience. You don't need to be a Brazilian black belt okay. uh, in jiu-jitsu to work into, with a jiu-jitsu athlete, right? But if you mm -hmm. have the experience, it's gonna gonna right. gonna help you. And I guess that I, example. I have I have I have some okay. guys too, right? So I try to, to absorb the, 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 the feedbacks and the information from them because uh, also triathlons, it's a, it's a very complex sport because they have to do like uh, many different things right. and the volume is, is huge and you have to adapt and adjust. Sometimes I prefer to just step back mm -hmm. on, a, on, a, on a strength training uh, and just... All right, can so specificity I, oh, okay i just received a call okay. so broke down the uh so uh mm -hmm. you have to work as a team when 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 you have the sport around uh as a performance coach we are in a backstage okay, right. i always say that we are not <laughs> we are not in front here they have to perform we are in a backstage help them to, to get prepared for the sport. So uh, when we are off, uh, 
a little bit over and trying to push them as, as, as hard as I can and try to build them as, a, as an athlete. And when the camp starts, mm -hmm. uh, the priority change and goes, goes right. for the, the specificities. And then my part, the kind of part, come to the to backup plan. Okay. I would say. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I answer you. No, that, uh, I was, gonna, I was just uh, speaking to more of the specificity of uh, mixed martial arts and uh, I guess how, how niche of a sport um, that seems to be compared to some of the other sports. So that. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So MMA, you have yeah. to be powerful. You have to be strong. Yeah. You have to be resistant. Uh, you have to be flexible. Uh, you have to move yourself, move your body well. So, for example, football. They have to. They have to do the same. But there's certain right. positions, right? I don't understand that mm -hmm. much, like I said. But the quarterback doesn't need to be uh, super strong comparing to the guys who, who is on the front line right, protecting right. the team, right? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but, and the guy who runs needs to be yeah. so fast and so powerful to, to sprint and, and run as fast as, as, as he can to, to catch the ball and do the, right. the, the touchdown. So there's a differences in between the team and you have to address this kind of uh, uh, capacity yeah. in a right. different way, right? So, and I kind of transferred this to the MMA. So, example, talking about mm -hmm. uh, Bigfoot, right. he's huge. A lot of people used to talk like, oh, he's too slow. And my answer is like, come here and <laughs> check him out and see if you can uh, let him move fast as a Junior Dos Santos example, which mm -hmm. is a heavyweight too. But it's a different, it's a totally different body type and uh, uh, his his whole uh, structure okay. is different, yep. right? Uh, so in my point of view, back at the time, I say like, okay, we can get to this point, this point in your uh, mm -hmm. footwork, right? But if I help you to increase your punching power, your, your strength, you don't need to give anybody like 100 punches. Yep. You just need one. That's a good point. And I hate, and I hate to say yeah. that, but it's true. Like, really, why are you gonna, why are you gonna uh, break the record and 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 like, I, okay, I did five hundred punches. Right. Okay. Right. Did you knock somebody down? Knock somebody out? I prefer to have them <laughs> giving like ten punches and right. hurt the guy so bad. Right. And that's it, right? So uh, this is this is the 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 effective part. I like to. To, okay. To work around. All right. Um, we we've been going for a little bit. I want to ask. Um, maybe this can be a, a little more of a fun question. But in all of your experiences, do you have a good story um, uh, about any particular athlete that you've trained, and maybe um, like their their progression to where they started to you know becoming a champion, or just any interesting uh, stories from your experiences training. I can't deny uh, about okay. like Amanda Nunes example. Uh, we are not working together anymore, but I, I can't right. deny our right. uh, history together. We work at Port 12 camps. So I'm happy to mm -hmm. say that was 12 wins, uh, no losses, uh, right. double champion. She defended her title nine times. So oh, there you go. There's, there's this, yep. that's all it. Uh, so, uh, and her improvement uh, around their performance, and again, not only performance, the, the, the whole uh, combo, mental, mm -hmm. mental part, physical part, technical part, okay. she was like wow. this. That's why she, she's, she, she dominates two divisions, right? So one particular story uh, was when she mm -hmm. decided to move up. So I knew... Uh, her opponent pretty well because okay. we are from the same city, right? So I knew when we spoke about like, okay, she has right. power. 
right? So you're moving up. So you need to move up as strong we can have, or we can, we can uh, be uh, powerful. Uh, and like, we just need to, to increase your strength, increase your mm -hmm. capability to generate power. And thinking about that, we were working pretty hard on heavy loads, on maximum strength, and also like the power training methods. Uh, I remember uh, she did bench press for four reps, six, uh, four or five reps. Wow. She did like 235. Right. For, for a woman, yep. they know. And, and that's, that's the amazing part because she was so confident. Right. When, when she touches her opponent, she will hurt. Mm -hmm. And if you watch the fight, <laughs> I don't need to, right. you know, uh, we know what happened. So after that, uh, there's a funny thing because uh, we were so happy. And she said, coach, when she touched me, I was expecting yeah. like, yeah. whoa, right? But when she touched uh, her, she felt but she said, like, oops, it's not okay. the, 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 the worst. I can right. handle this. And when she uh, touched her, her opponent, we know what happened. So this is the beauty about the whole uh, the team right. uh, yep. work, right? And, 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 and for sure, uh, the fighter has to go there and perform. But when we work around and, and address the, the, the specificity mm -hmm. and what they need, right? And this is, this is how I like to work. Like I think about, I, I can't waste my time and I, and I can't, and I have no time to like create different things. Like example, uh, we know weightlifting, mm -hmm. Olympic, yep. uh, weightlifting, it's a right. pretty good power exercise, right? But we are talking about mm -hmm. one Olympic sport. How many years right. they train to perform right. in right. a proper way, right? It's, it's so wrong to think about, okay, in two, three months, four months, I will make the, 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 mm -hmm. the guy perform in a perfect way. So if I, if I push this in the wrong way, sure. I can injure them. Just to use, just to use one strategy that maybe uh, is not the best one right. for that specific athlete. So sometimes I... Okay. Sometimes I break down the exercise, yep. right? So, so I try to understand also, like, uh, one thing it's important, and as mm -hmm. a professional, I opened my mind. I did, uh, I did one, uh, one, uh, okay. one course. Uh, it's okay. R yep. RTS. is a resistance training yep. specialist. Yep. I don't know if you heard Familiar. about it. Uh, and it's very, it's very biomechanical, uh, physics. Uh, and you have to understand that the uh, uh, force yeah. vector and uh, different ways right. to create the, the, the exercise. And if you understand the muscle action, and if you understand every single action comes right. from a muscle right. action, right? So a punch comes okay. from right. a muscle action. So if you understand the, 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 the idea, you can uh, build something special okay. for that specific athlete. So, uh, and this is kind of open my mind. So I, I, okay, if I, if I have the, the strategy to, to right. do some complex exercise, right. And if I feel the athlete, uh, doesn't, doesn't, mm -hmm. uh, have the mobility or, or coordination, push that way okay. if I don't have time for that. So I, I try to break down and create right. a different pattern, but. Okay. to achieve the, the, the same result. No, that makes perfect sense. Um, so I do want to be respectful of your time. I definitely appreciate you uh, jumping on to talk to me today. Um, I want to encourage everyone, again, here's, here's the book, uh, Training and Conditioning for MMA. There you go. You got yours too. Um, if you haven't got your copy, this is for everyone else listening. If you haven't got your copy, you can find it on our website, uh, us.humankinetics.com. I'm sure you can find it some other places too. But uh, yeah, if you are a fan of MMA, uh, go ahead and pick up your copy so you can actually see like what these fighters are going through um, on a regular basis uh, with their training. If you are a trainer or a strength coach, I definitely encourage you to uh, pick it up too. Um, 
you will find just about all the uh, training principles that Everton talked about today um, and a lot more. I mean, there's section on nutrition, there's uh, injuries, um, uh, periodization that we talked about a little bit. So it's just a, really a ton of great information in here. So um, definitely go get your copy. Um, and Everton, I will let you have the last word here. Uh, if you have anything else you want to add, if uh, maybe there's a, a way that people can keep up with you and uh, the training that you're doing with your athletes. So first of all, yep. I would love to, to say thank you, Aaron, uh, for the opportunity right. to share a little bit. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a little bit about uh, the ideas and the training and the experience uh, we have. But I believe it's important for every single people who wants to work with training or performance, understand that uh, right. there's not only exercise, there's not only training methods, there's much more than that. And we need to, to, to think about and, and get knowledge to work around, like not only mm -hmm. in, a, in a professional athletes, but with regular right. people, like people who want to lose weight, want to gain weight, like when you change people, people's uh, mm -hmm. routine, you change people's, right. people's habits and also yep. mindset. Because if somebody, if somebody uh, lose mm -hmm. like 30 pounds, uh, the person has to change her whole, uh, her right. whole clothing Right. Uh, style That's true. and everything, right? So uh, we, need to, we need to understand that because uh, it's mind mm -hmm. and body connect. So this is something I like always to share with people who I, I have opportunity to, to talk about. And second, thank you so much for the opportunity again. And yeah, uh, this book has uh, some yep. of our experience uh, as a professional and... If you want to follow me, my Instagram mm -hmm. is Everton VV Oliveira. Over there, I, I, I always try to share uh, a small part of what we do uh, out there. And yeah, uh, my biggest motivation is uh, help people to achieve their goals. And with professional athletes, the best mm -hmm. uh, results, right? And the results yep. will speak by itself. Great. So, That's yeah. an excellent way to end it. Again, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, have a good rest of your day.